Okay, boys, a long last installment number one of the uh, venerable hand tech 1008 Charlie versus the ubiquitous Picoscope uh, 2204 Alpha, both cheap um, oscilloscopes, right? So, um, what I've done here, boys, is I've tried to make some fair comparisons with respect to what is the hobbyist. Obviously, neither one of these is, is professional grade um, automotive oscilloscopes, right? So I'm trying to be fair about this. What would the hobbyist actually use these for? So I'm going to pick a couple of different scenarios over the next. I'm going to make this multiple parts, but this is being part one. What we're going to do is, hope you can see there, boys, what I've got. is we're just jumping out the fuel pump fuse with a fuse buddy type arrangement. It's not a fuse buddy, but a generic one. So we've got a clamp on that mirror. And what we're gonna do is actually just measure the current draw from the fuel pump. All right, so let me see if I can get you zoomed in fairly close on the scope itself now, boys. Okay. So what I've done is, is I've set the, uh, um, the time base at 5 milliseconds per division. Uh, we're on channel 1, which will be the yellow trace, boys. It's 5 amps per division, and I've got it set up for use with the Handtech uh, clamp-on amp meter, the CC65. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actuate the fuel pump utilizing my V-Pecker because it does have some limited... Um, bi-directional controls and the fuel pump is actually one of them so I'll get the fuel pump to operate when we come back if I've got the trigger level set appropriately um, we should be able to see an image here we can take it from there so I'll just toggle to the v-pecker I'm already in the engine control module in bi-directional control mode and uh, I am in the fuel pump uh, operation mode at the time if you listen closely uh, you might be able to hear it the fuel pump is running and I'll toggle it back off. And there's the image we actually have on the um, on the hand tech. That to me looks like a damn good image from a cheap oscilloscope. You can clearly see the different humps from the different segments on the fuel pump. In fact, I'll zoom in on it a little more. And I wanted to show you this particular, uh, I've only set it up for a one shot um, with respect to the trigger because I wanted to see the pump actually kick in. The initial surge current on the pump, which you can see is a maximum of 21 amps. It's quite a lot of current, obviously. But this figure is a wee bit of a wee bit meaningless, boys, because it's just set up for the mid. And, of course, because it's skewed with the surge in the current, that figure is actually skewed. Um, I know you can't see the, uh, the graticules. In fact, let me scale them up a wee bit. Maybe that'll help so you can see a wee bit better. So what we basically have here is about, um, it looks about a nominal current draw of about seven amps. So what we'll do is we'll take the, uh, when it's all said and done, we've done the Pico as well. We'll take a clamp on that mirror and independently verify how much current it's actually drawing. So again, that figure is only approximate guys, just uh, looking at the scale there. So that looks like a pretty good image to me. In fact, if we scale up even further, so there's all the commutator seg segments there. And that looks pretty good to me. Again, it's slightly skewed because we're still dealing with the inrush of current with the pump actually starting up. Is that any good for troubleshooting a fuel pump issue? is damn good from a hundred dollar oscilloscope that that scope is about a hundred dollars american slightly more canadian I, I don't even know what that is in british pounds but the point is that hand tech scope is about as cheap as you can actually get the 1008 charlie fantastic scope for the money of course there's guys that are going to have uh, other equipment out there that are going to knock it guys right it's not a professional grade scope if you're in the learning mode uh, of using a scope like i am does it make sense to go out and buy a, a big money scope? No. What makes sense is 
to get a starter scope, up your skills. The first thing you should do is up your knowledge and skills and, uh, and be able to maximize the tooling. If you can't use the tool, what good is it having the latest and greatest Pico scope with God knows, ten, you know, four channels, eight channels, whatever the latest models are that actually have the, the smart probes and all that stuff. That's all great stuff, don't get me wrong. But what's the point if you don't know how to use it, if you can't interpret the waveform and what you're actually looking at? So you can actually garner a great deal of information from that, boys. The most important thing is, of course, all the segments are actually there, and it doesn't appear to be any dropouts. What you're looking for, like any waveform, is um, consistent, uniform and consistency um, with no anomalies, let's say, in the, in the waveform itself. Yeah, so... I would say that's a pass with respect to the hand tech. Now, can it beat the picoscope? Mm, <laughs> we'll see. Let's move on to the picoscope. So here we go, boys. This time we're dealing with the picoscope. So basically the same setup. I've uh, rejigged the uh, time base a little bit to uh, suit the different scopes because the, the Graticule layout uh, is a wee bit different between the two scopes. So to try and optimize the image we're going to take a look at, uh, I've changed the time bases. So in this particular case, it's um, I've actually got it set. There's going to be a wee bit of discrepancy in the current because PicoScope, of course, not being a hand-tech product, doesn't give you the facility to um, automatically select the uh, CC65. However, you can actually you can actually load the uh, probe setup. I haven't done so, so there's going to be a wee bit of a discrepancy because it thinks it's a 60 amp uh, current probe, not a 65. And um, the time base is actually 10 milliseconds per division. Uh, again, just because of the uh, the x-axis graticule layout is a wee bit different, and um, I've got a wee bit the the scaling is a wee bit different, of course. Um, on the uh, Pico as well with respect to the voltage scale, which is reading in amps because I'm on the current uh, clamp mode, okay? So I'm just gonna do the same thing. We'll run the fuel pump. I've got it set up for a single shot. I should do. And I got nothing, how come? because I wasn't in play mode, that's how come. Let's try that again. Yes, okay, so that looks a wee bit better. I've actually cropped off the top of the uh, the um, the image there a wee bit, boys. A wee bit unfair at the picoscope. Um, I don't think I can actually bring that in, can I? No, it's cropped off because it was over scale. Another thing I should mention, to be fair to the PicoScope, um, is the fact that on this particular image, boys, you'll notice that the line thickness is actually quite thick. I've stepped up the line thickness um, for video purposes. You could get a better image by going back to basically the uh, the stock, <laughs> the standard image thickness on the uh, PicoScope. It would be a little clearer, a little sharper. Um, but I've done so for video purposes. You can see we've basically got the same image, very similar. Let me toggle between the two. So there's the hand tech image, of course. In fact, I can bring that up a wee bit. Can I? Yeah, I can. So there's the hand tech image. And it is very similar, boys, as you can see. Uh, to the picoscope image right of course the beauty of the picoscope is far better with respect of uh, being able to zoom in on it so I can take this segment for example you can zoom in on that and then you can see in the zoomed in view um, we can get a better look at the um, uh, each individual segment within the fuel pump itself so picoscope software far better nobody would ever argue that point are both of these budget scopes capable of um, of giving you a decent image with respect to uh, troubleshooting a fuel pump? Absolutely. So which is the better scope? Hands down, the Pico Scope 2204 Alpha. I think you'd struggle to find if people are being honest. And listen, I'm a fan of the hand tech. I want the hand tech to win some of these rounds. I really do. I'll, I'll, I'll fully disclose my bias because it's the underdog. <laughs> I like rooting for the underdog. But if we're honest, 
the Pico scope provides a better image, right? Um, so that's it for round one, boys. Uh, the last shot I'll actually close with is actually uh, the fuel pump actually running, and I'll just show you a shot in the clamp on uh, amp mirror. This one actually providing us with a um, standalone uh, measurement, just so we can see how the uh, two actually stack up. I should mention, um, it looks like the Pico scope there. I didn't mention it, but the Pico scope is showing about a nominal draw of about seven amps as well. So they're both very, very close. As I said, there is a discrepancy with respect to uh, the Pico scope in what clamp on amp meter it thinks it's actually using, right? So let's go back to the car. So let me get that out of there. So on the 40 amp scale, boys, I'll just zero this close enough. I hope you don't mind reading that sideways. Okay, we're back here, boys. So I'll just toggle on the fuel pump from the uh, V Packer. And I can see that's a bit of a pain in the ass to read it sideways, of course, but it's reading about six and a quarter amps. So we've got a wee bit of a discrepancy, of course, between the uh, the clamp on uh, the standalone clamp on amp meter and the two scopes. I think that's to be expected to some degree, boys. Uh, we're talking about within three quarters of an amp, an amp maximum. Uh, I think that's pretty good. Uh, the V Packer will, in fact, cut, cut out the fuel pump. I think it's 20 seconds or so, maybe 30 seconds. There it goes. So there's a safety there in the program, which makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, so we'll give this round to PicoScope. Um, no surprise, to be quite honest. But honorable mention goes to the Hantec. I think it's a great image. I think it's well worth the money. You cannot go wrong with it. Either of these scopes, boys, there's a little bit of price discrepancy. The Pico is a little bit more expensive. Um, is the differential there in the... In the uh, the value versus the differential in the money but it certainly is you know it's only a wee bit more money but a hand tech I, I like the way the hand tech actually displays the data on the screen it's kind of simpler a wee bit less intimidating for a beginner so that's that's going to be worth something as well right so um okay uh, i hope that made some sense to you boys and uh we'll leave it at that for one night cheers